Last night, almost three million people watched this broadcast to find out about George Soros. Last night, we introduced you to the puppet master, billionaire financier George Soros, notorious for collapsing economies and regimes all around the world. He's known uh, as the man who broke the Bank of England. The Prime Minister of Malaysia called Soros an unscrupulous profiteer. In Thailand, he was branded the economic war criminal. They also said that he sucks the blood from people. In 1994, George Soros stated, quote, just right that the former Soviet empire is now called the Soros Empire. Combine these credits with his power, along with his financial fortune, it is no wonder that he fancies himself some sort of god. That's not something that we have said. That is something that he claims. He has described himself over and over again as some sort of god, even as the conscience of the world. Yes, I did say that, and actually I stand by it. I think the world very much needs a conscience. I want my foundation network to be the conscience of the world. Okay, he wants it to be the conscience of the world. Well, he's a very, very generous man. Most people in the world know him as a philanthropist. Huge charity guy. Well, we'll look into that charity tonight. He gets a kick out of playing God. It's actually amusing to him. He, he says, in his own words, it's a game. Unfortunately, what Mr. Soros forgets is these are real people. This is not some game. Real lives are being destroyed for his financial gain and for his power. I'm called a hate monger because I have conservative views and positions like, I don't know, let people keep their money. But let me tell you this, it takes a cold, cold heart to have full knowledge that what you are doing to make a buck is literally destroying the lives of people. And now he's messing with your life. He says, in his own words, America is his next target. I became concerned with the problems of globalization, where you have global markets, but you have politics based on the sovereignty of states. So how do you deal with that, that issue? And, uh, and then I came to the realization that open society is endangered by, by our current leadership in, in this country. And that is when I refocused my attention on the United States. He has focused his attention. This isn't um, a hypothesis. This has been proven. This is what this man does. He has done it before. And now he wants an orderly decline of the dollar. His words, not mine. If you thought five or four dollar a gallon gas is painful, wait until Soros devalues your dollar even more. Forget about driving. How about eating? We've told you um, just recently, I've told you this for what, two years now? That they would devalue the dollar and that inflation would come. Financial Times reported it today. It's about to be added to your grocery bill. And if you're the one in the household doing the grocery shopping, you've already seen it, but oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. As they devalue our dollar, an orderly decline. You will start to see prices like one group, uh, inflation group, predicted that it will soon cost $11. $11.43 for an ear of corn. One ear. How about going to the grocery store and seeing a price tag on a loaf of wheat bread of $23.05. This sugar, this size, 32 ounces of sugar. Sixty-two dollars and twenty-one cents um, for the milk, good old soy milk. I mean, who doesn't smooth and delicious? Twenty-four dollars and thirty-one cents for this size. For a container of this coffee, Folgers, eleven and a half ounces, seventy-seven dollars and seventy-one cents. For a uh, container of orange juice, not this size, but for sixty-four fluid ounces, fluid ounces, Minute Maid orange juice. They are now saying it will be $45.71. And one thing that I couldn't believe, and we called the experts and asked them, okay, the, the, please tell me that this, uh, this institute on inflation is nuts. No, no, they're not, unfortunately. I couldn't believe that one candy bar, one Hershey's milk chocolate candy bar, one, uh, one and a half ounces Hershey's milk chocolate, 
$15.50. This, Mr. Soros, is not a game. At least not for the schlubs outside of your world. I don't know anybody inside the world of George Soros. Well, you've got Timothy Geithner, you have Ben Bernanke, you have most of the politicians in Washington. We're the ones who are going to risk in this game. When he manages the decline of our dollar, him and his minions in Washington, who do you think pays the price? Will it be him or will it be you? You see, he knows what's coming. And because of that, he can hedge. He knows exactly where to go. He knows where the exits are. And he's done it over and over again. He will gain profit and power. And you will lose both. He's playing God, which is fine by him. Because he's an atheist. So there has to be a God who's going to fill that void. Well, he's smart enough to do it. In one transcript, he said that he was benevolent just like God. He sees the future just like God. So what does... God's Bible preach globalization. Open society is a desirable form of social organization, both as a means to an end and as an end in itself. Okay. That's, by the way, the replacement of the republic in open society. This is not a leap of faith. I'm stating this as fact, and as I told you last night at glenbeck.com and on theblaze.com, you will find all of these facts, all of the research. Do not take my word for it. Not one bit on this show. Do not take my word for it. Read about it yourself. Most of it comes in the form of his own words. Come on over here for a second. These are, uh, many of these are the books that we use to uh, prepare this show, and um, many of these books are written by him. This one, this one, this one. You can read about it. He's not shy about telling you. I mean, God wrote a book too. He wrote three. Because of his own words, we know what to look for. We know the signs. We know what he's done in the past to bring down regimes. He's left a, a blueprint, a pattern to look for. And now that Soros is saying that he has turned his focus and set his sights on America, don't you think we should look at his past and see how he's done it before? What are the footprints? <laughs> Where is he leaving fingerprints? How did he do it? Four or five times before. Well, we also should look at what has he accomplished so far? How far down that line is he? Tonight, we look at the Puppet Master's latest work of art, America Under Siege.